Finding a thread is not a challenge. Finding the right thread is a challenge. I will be traversing across through the different one or more MF paths. Whenever I hear a bottom up, so you need to understand with respect to the finite state machine. You have to remember two important things. One is structural strategy as well as the functional strategy. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the second session on system testing. So guys, in the previous session, I have discussed in detail about why do we use system testing and what is the difference between the integration testing and also what is the difference between the system testing. So guys, you have got the deep knowledge with respect to why should we have system testing in the previous session. So now, guys, we have also discussed how exactly the threats is being involved in this system testing is what we have discussed in the last session. Along with that, we have also studied, so how do I find the threats? So that was the major topic that we have discussed in our previous session. But now, I will be discussing one of the important concepts in the system testing. So what is that? So you will be having a question, right? So let me discuss that. Let me show you. Guys, I will be discussing about the ASF. What exactly this ASF is all about? I used to take up an example with respect to the ASF in my previous session, but you had a question mark. So what is this ASF? So I think this is the right session and the time to discuss more in detail about ASF testing. Along with that, I had a problem like, you know, how do I find the thread? So that was a concept that I start my previous session. But now, so I have a new problem here. Suppose if I find the thread, so guys, so how do I select the particular thread to test it is what I will be doing it with respect to two different strategy. So that's going to be the structural strategy. Another one, it's going to be the functional strategies for thread testing. So this is what I will be discussing with all of you in today's session. So let's get into the session. Guys, what exactly ASF is all about? So in the name itself, uh, it is very clearly mentioned atomic so guys what is the meaning of atomic all of you would have come across with this word you know whenever you guys were reading the concept of chemistry in your uh, class 12 right so what is atomic i cannot further divide that is what i will call it as a atomic right so why do we use this word here that will be a question for all of you so that is the answer that i'm going to discuss for all of you right now so guys observe here atomic system functions is what i will call it as popularly known as asf so what exactly this atomic system function so please observe it is an action that is observable at the system level so that's what you need to observe the first important point it's an action that you can observe in the system level in terms of port input and output events so whenever you are performing the input and output events in the system level, so it is an action that you will be able to observe. So this is what we call it as a ASF, right? It begins with a input port event. So ASF always starts with the input port event and traverse through more than one or more MM path. So MM path in the sense what? So guys, I have a program. So if I want to execute the program, obviously I will be traversing through a lot of different statements, right? So how do I represent the flow of execution of the statements? So I use a concept called MM path, right? So that is what we have discussed. So guys, so now please observe whenever I want to represent the ASF, I will be traversing across through the different one or more MM path. So then after that, so please observe and it terminates with the port output event so always let me make it uh, simple for all of you asf starts with a input port event and it traverses across different statements and then it get, it comes to an end at the output port event is what you need to observe here so this is a small brief explanation with respect to the asf so to conclude uh, this topic asf is an atomic function which you will be able to observe the behavior in the system level so this occurs in the input port event and travels through or different paths and finally it gets terminated in the output port event is what you need to remember. So fine.
Guys, uh, one more important uh, point with respect to the yes, F. So what exactly that I have? When viewed from the system level, there is no compiling reason to decompose. That is what we have already discussed with respect to the atomic. Suppose if you want, I have the atomic system function. So I want to decompose it for the further level. So is it possible? No, it is not possible because it is already in the atomic state. Atomic state and since you cannot further divide that into another functions. So that is the point that you need to remember with respect to this. They are trying to give you some of the examples like, you know, digit entry, card entry, card dispersing and then the pin entry is probably too big. So this is the different example that they would like to give you with respect to the ASF, right? So guys, this is what you need to understand with respect to the ASF. Now the next point with respect to the ASF that I have here is, please observe here, ASF are the upper limit for MM path. So what exactly it means? Now listen to me carefully. MM path should not cross the ASF boundary. So that's what they need to mention here. So guys, listen to me carefully. Imagine, let me make it very simple. I have one unit, okay? That is what I will call it as a ASF, okay? Unit in the sense, if I see that in the system level, so one particular behavior is what I will call it as a ASF, okay? So I should be within that boundary. I should not cross that limit or that boundary is what they are trying to explain in this point. Right, moving forward to the next point that I have here. ASF represents the seam between the integration and the system testing. So guys, please observe here. There is an important point with respect to the ASF, right? They are the largest item. When, what is this, uh, what is the meaning of this largest item? When I take, so please observe, when I come to the concept of integration testing, so ASF is the largest item but when it comes to the system level testing, so it is the smallest level thing is what you need to understand, right? So that's what you need to observe with respect to the ASF, right? Moving forward to the next one. Yes, we were discussing about the structural strategy. So guys, what exactly the structural strategy? Observe the structural strategy for threat testing. In the last session, we have discussed in detail about how do I find a thread. Finding a thread was a difficult task and we were using the finite state machine to find a thread, right? We had an example like, you know, pin entry and we have uh, now discussed that in detail with respect to the different low levels of you no know, decomposition of the finite state machine and we got multiple threads. Lot of topics we have discussed in our last session. But finding a thread is not a challenge. Finding a right thread is a challenge. So guys, now let's discuss that. What is that I have? Generating a thread may be easy, right? So, but decide which one to be tested is complex. So how do I solve this problem then? We use two strategy. One is structural strategy. Another one is functional strategy. So guys, when it comes to the structural strategy, observe here, we mainly depend upon the concept called bottom up thread. So when it comes to the structural strategy, we mainly depend upon bottom up thread. So what exactly bottom up thread? So bottom up thread, whenever I say the word called bottom up thread, so please remember all my structure. Listen to me carefully. When it comes to the state machines, the state machine that especially when it comes to the finite state machines are organized in the form of hierarchical structure. Yes or no? You just compare and you just try to imagine the previous example what we have taken finite state machine for the pin entry. So it is obviously organized in a hierarchical fashion. Suppose if it is organized in a hierarchical fashion, it is possible to work bottom up. When you have the concept of hierarchical, it is possible to work from the bottom up is what you need to remember. So fine, traversing this path and go up one level to the pin entry. So that is what the concept that they say with respect to the bottom up. So and madam, listen to me carefully. Whenever I say structural, guys, strategy for threat testing, you have to remember the point that is bottom up in the sense what? Whenever I hear a bottom up, so you need to understand with respect to the finite state machine. Sir, whenever I say finite state machine, obviously you should also relate that to the hierarchical decomposition. Yes. 
all the data is being arranged in the hierarchical manner. Suppose if it is in the hierarchical manner, you can traverse back to reach the top level that is pin entry. So fine, this is what you need to remember with respect to the structural strategy. So fine, but when it comes to this, I will be using two important metrics. So what is that metrics that I will be using with respect to the structural strategy? So guys, that I have is two important things as I told you, one is node, another one is edge coverage metrics. Sir, what is this node and edge coverage metrics? I will be discussing this in the next session in detail, right? So this is what you need to remember with respect to the structural strategy for thread testing. So that's what you need to remember. So, but when it comes to the functional strategy, so guys, the next concept that I have is functional strategy. When it comes, when it comes to the functional strategy, so guys, the coverage metrics will be these three points that is going to be event ports and data. So this is going to be very, very important. So we will be discussing these topics in detail in the coming session is what you need to remember. So guys, so what is that you have to remember? You have to remember two important things. One is structural strategy as well as a functional strategy. So when it comes to the structural strategy, you will remember two important metrics. So one is node, another one is edge. But when it comes to the functional strategy, you will remember three. So the first one is event-based testing. The second one is port and the third one is data. So in total, I will be discussing five different strategies. So guys, this will be there in your next session. So why do we need this? So remember the cause that I need to identify the particular thread for testing. So that's going to be my reason. So to understand this topic by saying this, let me wind up the session. Thank you. Bye bye.